live stream. Um, so we're going to, we're going to do this pretty consistently when, as recruits start coming in. So, uh, get used to us going live whenever you see something like this, usually around eight or nine o'clock that day. Um, we were hoping to be live, but this time we, we have a pretty exciting commit in AO Tafasi, uh, who's a, a three-star defensive lineman. Um, so I know when many people see this kid's name pop up, it's probably not going to, um, encourage a lot of conversation just because the three star next to his name but tell me why we should be excited about this kid ab uh he's a big hawking defensive <laughs> lineman um i think that's a good place to start yeah that never hurts uh, yeah no, I, I don't know it's kind of a weird story with him potentially being a 23 prospect but then reclassing to 22 something with the COVID year i wish i kind of was smart smart enough to understand that old story but i'm just a dumb you know offensive line guy so we're, we don't care about that stuff. We care about zone steps and you know, buck, <laughs> Don't sell step. yourself short here, AB. <laughs> Skip pools, all the good stuff. <laughs> we don't worry about reclassing. So, uh, yeah, so so it's an interesting story, but it's kind of neat because, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a big, massive kid. Uh, it's like 6'2-ish, 310-ish pounds. I mean, just a big boy. Uh, a young man who's going to come in. He's going to sit for a year, take an academic red shirt. Um, just because of the reclassifying and then hopefully be ready to step right into your rotation in year two, you know, after, uh, yeah, in 2023, in the 2023 season, right. Uh, when you lose Fabian Lovett, you lose Robert Cooper and who knows what else, what other kind of attrition you could end up having there. So, yeah, I think this is a big get, uh, they missed on Tyree West at the, um, the yeah, early they- signing day period, which was a big prospect that they were after he ended up at Tennessee. Uh, they landed Daniel Lyons. They landed uh, Bishop Thomas, who two, are two young men that had great springs and two kids that we were all really excited about when we broke their film down. Now you add a big meat eater in the middle, and it's just exciting. Yeah, so he's listed at 6'4", 300 on uh, 247's website. He's actually 100% crystal balled to Arkansas. So um, it seems like it, it was a pretty close call between us and the Razorbacks. Um so a, a big kid from Maryland. So let's go ahead and jump into his film to see yeah, kind of what he looks like in action. All right. So I did pre-screen this film, and this arrow is kind of funny because uh, it's nowhere close. Um, it's pointing it's, to this outside linebacker. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's kind of on his really on like his butt. So yeah. So that's that's who you're looking for here. Just look for the biggest guy on the field in general. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see the get off right away. So you know, a six two ish, yeah, six one ish, six two ish type prospect at 300 pounds. To yeah, get I think off the that fo- first football, clip. to get off the football like that's impressive. You got to like that. Um, I said it to I, I said it to Brendan and Chris and Zach earlier, and I asked I asked their opinions, and I haven't heard back from them yet. But the he he kind of reminds me of like Niles Lawrence Stample. I don't know if you remember Niles from the, from the mid 2000 or the mid uh, 2010s. He, uh, I don't know why my memory right now is (laughs) slipping me. I thought he, I thought he was around for the championship team, but you know, know, it's been a while. My brain cells are going. So um, just uh, kind of thick gets off the ball real quick. Um, But you see, I mean, that you see potential there. Right. Yeah, I think I think the size and the first step are the f- two things you look at. So maybe he's not quite as polished or developed when it comes to technique or or really uh, body composition. Um, but he has two things that are that are kind of hard to come by from the high school rank, which is size and size and that speed. Um, and we've seen this a couple of times with with the defensive tackles that they've taken, like. Like Bishop Thomas, like you mentioned yeah. earlier, uh, they tend to get these guys that that kind of project as slashers, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So these guys you can put at the three three technique or the one technique sure. that are really just true one gap guys. You say, I mean, you can see it here in this next play. He's a movement kid. I I mean, I think you could I think you could get him to two gap if you wanted to, but he's a movement player. He's a guy you're going to want slanting. He's a guy you're going to want to put on some stunts, some tackle and stunts, some tackle tackle stunts. Um, I mean, he gets into a gap. He comes off the ball really well for a guy that size. 
I can tell you right now, Odell's going to have him on that low bag, the old low jack, and uh, he's got to work on. He's got to get his pad level down. Yeah, he, he, he is a little high. high, but he's athletic. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you don't often see them dropping a three hundred pound guy out in in coverage. No, here. And, and I don't. I mean, he's not playing against the the biggest guy. I mean, there's a couple couple linemen out there I see with some decent size, but he's not playing. He's not playing. I don't think he's playing against the greatest talent in the world, but uh, you know, still, you, you can you can tell get off. You can tell size, explosiveness. Those are those are easy things to pick pick out on tape. Yeah. Um, one thing I will point out is he he is listed at six four, but I think he's uh, being a little generous with himself. Unless he's playing with, he doesn't really seem to be any taller than the rest of his. No. I guess he's playing offensive line here, but. Uh, unless he's playing with a, a unnaturally sure. large football team here, I, I don't not think sure he's I'd touching buy six, that six four. four. No, I'd but buy, that's fine. I'd, I'd buy six two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think you see a guy that moves really well. Um, is he on the O line? He must be on the O line here. Yeah, he is. This this whole second half is O line. Yeah. He's the right guard here. So All yeah, right. he, that's him taking a kid down. He he ain't soft. No, I think uh, I think he's trying to show you that he's a football player. He's not. He's yeah. I mean, the technique's not there. He, yeah, he's a raw prospect. Really not. A, it's it's a good thing he's got a year to sit. Um, yeah. So tell Ryan. tell me about his situation. So this is kind of bizarre, I, I, right? He's a twenty twenty three kid. I, I read it earlier. I know Zach uh, at twenty four seven Knowles twenty four seven um, had a story up on on the uh, home site about. Um, what what the deal was with him? I <laughs> pour one out for the TN Discord. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I know Zach had a had a story up about what his deal was. I guess so. He he got the COVID year because Maryland didn't play football in 2020. Um, so he had that extra year, so he could play one more season. Technically, I think he'd be like a fifth year a fifth year senior in high school. He could play one more season. Uh, and I guess Ryan Barto talked to him about that he could enter school now, enter college right. now, sit out a year, and then be ready to go. So I think ultimately that's what ends up happening. He decided to come down to Florida State, get under the tutelage and under the wings of Odell Hagens, get into Mike Norvell and uh, Josh Body by Storm's uh, weightlifting program, <laughs> get ready to rock. Um, yeah, so okay. Yeah. So this is a kid that's showing up on campus relatively quickly. Um, yeah, he's enrolling tomorrow. Shirting. He's enrolling tomorrow. He's red. Sh- yeah, he, Which, yeah, so... He's taking an academic redshirt, which means he can be around the team. He can't play in any games. He can, I believe he can participate in practice. I'm pretty certain of that. Um, I haven't brushed up on my academic redshirt rule book here recently, unfortunately. <laughs> I didn't, if I'd known this was coming, I would have read it. I wasn't quite sure this was happening. Uh, there were some rumors that he was going to go to Arkansas. So, but uh, should have been more prepared. So, yeah, um, I think we can look at it and be like, all right, well, yeah, he's not so, he's not an immediate impact kid, but he's they, a kid that counts to your your 2023 class. He's a kid no, 22. That, he's counts to your 22 class. So he's well, coming in as yes, a, yes. He's, he's coming in as a 22. But he um, he's a 22 kid that wouldn't have played anyways. Correct. Because he's behind yeah. Fabian Lovett, Robert yeah, Cooper. Absolutely. One yep. of the one of the better defensive lines in the ACC. And yeah, um, definitely. So he gets a free year of development. Well, not free. Mm-hmm. He's got to use his red shirt, but a, a year right. that he would have used anyway. So right, correct. Yeah, I, I think all in all, um, I was having this conversation with some people earlier. Mike Norvell and, and the staff have had misses in the recruiting trail. They've really done a hell of a job of getting offensive and defensive line talent in here, though. Uh, in this last class, um, we heard a lot of good things about Daniel Lyons and Bishop Thomas. Yeah, both of them in the interior of your defensive line. Uh, now this young man being in fluxed in there, and you're not relying on these guys to do a whole lot till year two. So you give them an opportunity to develop their bodies and be more prepared. Um, uh, that's a good thing. I think you're in a good spot there. Offensive line, you, you know, you got Antivis Woody and all the other guys in uh, from along the offensive line. If they're not doing anything, they are getting your lines right. And that's where you win football games. So. That's a positive, and this young man's going to fit right in the middle. He's going to give you some presence in there, size, girth, width, explosiveness, um, all the kind of uh, adjectives you like hearing when you talk about defensive linemen, right? Yeah, I think I think I agree with you. I think that 
I think the the ceiling that the staff is bringing in and, and that they're bringing in as recruits is still a giant question mark. Um, but they seem to be filling gaps pretty effectively. You look at this roster today versus three years ago. Yeah, you don't have the four and five stars that were left over from Jimbo, but you don't have massive holes on the roster um, right. that, yeah, that you would have had a couple of years ago. And I think right. this kid's kind of indicative of exactly what you see in the kinds of kids Norvell's been able to bring to Florida State. Mm-hmm. These kind of high three-star kids that were probably a little under the radar probably could have been four stars in the right circumstances. Um, but um, but aren't. They're just high high floor three-star kids that are going to come in and, and kind of fix the, the problems you have around the program. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think... Um, and at the end of the day, end of the day, you're you, you're doing what you need to do, which is build your build your fronts up. Um, and we'll see where that takes them in time. I, I think that uh, you know, as far as adding to what this young man's got on tape, uh, I think there remains some to be some to be seen. I mean, I think that you could have some skepticism based on kind of some of the competition he played. Yeah, but look, if Sam Pittman wanted you, that makes me feel better. Sam Pittman's a you know, notorious offensive line guy one of the best offensive line coaches to ever do it in college football um he evaluated him and thought it was worth it i don't i think if odell hagan's evaluated and thought you were worth it that that, that means something yeah. um and you get a chance to get him in here get him in early and get him get him developed a little bit before you're asking him to play so yeah i think, I think that i think the ahead. fact that he's a 2022 kid too means that i mean it's it's basically it's a it's a no lose proposition to me in this situation. Yeah, you're using a scholarship, but um, yeah, that's okay because you're gonna eat, you're either gonna do that or you're gonna eat that scholarship. And right, you know, ultimately, I think adding a upside prospect is a good thing. Yep. So all right, let's get out of here, Kev. Yep. Uh, you guys have been seeing a lot of us here lately, blasting a lot of videos on uh, X's and O's. Kev's got another video uh, coming up for X's and O's, right? Kev, you want to tell people about that real quick? Yeah, so there have already been, um, you and Brendan have written articles kind of discussing where Florida State's passing game is going wrong, um, what it's not doing effectively. You touched on the offensive line. Brendan had an excellent article come out yesterday about the wide receiver room. Uh, I'm trying to tie it all together and um, also introduce kind of a topic about that's come up several times in conversation on their articles about uh, uh, coaching play calling, uh, different things like that. So uh, that should be coming out Thursday. And then I think our plan is after that comes out, we're going to all get together and kind of talk about the future of the passing game. And I think that's where uh, we'll answer a lot of the, the questions that our articles and videos have, have kind of prompted. And we'll we'll kind of discuss where, where we see this thing going. Because, um, yeah, we'll have spent three articles basically talking about what was wrong yeah, now. Absolutely. You know? And 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 to be fair, we've spent three articles being critical of what's going on. I think there's some reason, some some uh, you know, reason for optimism also with the passing game. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to talk about that. Uh, there's a lot that's going on with the offensive line. There's a lot that go that's going on with the uh, wide receiver group. Obviously, this off season, and then a lot that's going to go into. Yeah, the coaching as we've got a new offensive coordinator stepping in and a new play caller, Mike Corbell taking that back over. So you, you could check that out. Uh, the videos will be on X's and Knowles. Uh, yep. You can check us out here on the Knowles 24 seven YouTube page and on X's and Knowles. I know that can be confusing. Uh, please <laughs> make sure you are subscribed to both. Please make sure you are hitting the thumbs up. Please make sure you've got your bell notifications on. So you get all of us. And if you want to, um, Jump into Knowles 24-7. I think there's a 60% off uh, little uh, deal going on right now. I'm not much of a pusher, but hey, I mean, if that's your yeah. thing, lots get of on good, it. Get well, on. That's a really good conversation. I was not a member of Knowles 247 before I was brought on, and I've been actually really pleasantly surprised by how active the community is there. So, yeah. um, so if that's no, we're your not thing, getting paid extra to say that. <laughs> <laughs> if, that's, if that's your thing, come join us. If not, yeah, keep also, checking us out. We're going to be here doing live streams for, for most commits and stuff. It's easy. It's fun. We get to interact with you guys. So uh, just be 
keep an, an eye out when you hear news like this, and hopefully we can get to you that day. Uh, we didn't do a great job of reaching out beforehand, saying we were going live, but uh, next time we'll try to try to incorporate everybody else here. Our faithful always show up. <laughs> I know you're out there, Briley. He he's somewhere. <laughs> we'll, we'll get a All right. comment tomorrow saying sorry oh. he was late. <laughs> let's let's chop it up for Ao Tafasi. Let's get out of here. Let's head out.